Today I'd like to share something that's been a real blessing in my life. It's something that has helped my prayers and I hope that it will help yours also. It should increase faith as well. There's only one aspect of prayer at this time that I want to share. There are many that I could, but this is an aspect of calling upon God in truth. Now I learned this aspect somewhat. It was pointed out. It's a biblical, um, it's a bis biblical basis, of course, but I found it pointed out through a man named R.A. Torrey. He was a Christian preacher and teacher from the early 20th century. He had a book called How to Pray. I'll have a link to this in the description so that you can refer to it if you have interest in, in looking at it. But my prime verse in, in being focused around is Psalm 145, 18, where it reads, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. Now, this might seem like a really simple thing, calling upon the Lord in truth, because Obviously, when we call upon the Lord, there is something that we want. There is something we're seeking him for. Hopefully, we're also seeking to praise him and worship him at times. But we need things. We depend on him and we should call upon him. So here we can't assume that the scripture is talking about the difference between truth and a deliberate lie. Because just the very fact of calling upon God in prayer indicates that you're calling upon God. And so you're not going to be able to lie to him. But he sees inside of you. He knows your motives. He knows what you're saying. You won't be able to deceive God. But the thing is, we are blind. We are deceived. And many times we don't pray in truth. And so one of the first things that I'd, I'd suggest to you is that, you know, you need to pray for understanding. When you're coming to God in prayer, pray for understanding of your need. What is it exactly that you need and why do you need it? These things all need to be presented to the Lord. Something else is you need to be open to what the Lord might say to you. Sometimes uh, we tend to veer to what we're familiar with. We're kind of unfortunately spoiled. Hopefully it could be covetous at times, but spoiled. Just like at the time I had shared about the Lord healing our air conditioner, uh, I was spoiled. It was something I was used to, and I hadn't really explored other options. But as the years went on, I mean, the Lord did heal it. He was very kind. But as it went on, I realized that I could get by with ceiling fans and other fans, and they were, they were just as good, if not better, and they were a lot cheaper. And so we also ought to be open to how God is going to answer our prayers. But sometimes we're focused. We really want one thing, one certain way. And, uh, well, we need, to, we need to call upon the Lord in truth. And if we're calling upon him, then he has to be able to answer us in his way. So I want you to understand, first of all, that God will take you at your word. Whatever you say to him, he will take you at your word. I gave you an example of this. This would be something where, again, God is answering prayer. Of late here in Botswana, I have had an issue with some of the dogs. There are a lot of dogs. Uh, they're not kept. They just run around. Uh, they, they usually are tied to, to people and property, but there are no collars or leashes or anything like that. For the most part, they're all pretty neutral. A few are friendly, but some will you know, start barking at you. I still have not had any actually attack me yet. But a couple times I lost my temper when these dogs were starting to give me a rough time. And I felt ashamed for it. And so I, I keep the dog issue before the Lord that he would that I wouldn't shame him in my behavior and that I'd be a lot more wise and patient and things. And so I've been keeping this before the Lord in prayer. Then my wife pointed out the other day how, you know, you've been having, you know, you've been having and we've been having a few times where dogs have started you know, coming after us a little bit, you know, snarling, barking or whatever. Uh, just a little forward. Most of these dogs are really wimpy. I mean, <laughs> they'll do that, but they won't come after you. But uh, they'll kind of, you know, it's kind of blow uh, trying to intimidate. But anyway, I mean, I thought about that. I thought, man, what's that? Is, haven't I committed this to the Lord? Why is this going on? So I prayed to the Lord and he reminded me of what I had said and what I was praying. I was praying for wisdom. I was praying for patience, praying to depend on him in these circumstances because I can't avoid the dogs altogether. And I love dogs. I mean, I really do. 
And, uh, and so the thing is, if the Lord is going to answer my prayer, I have to encounter dogs. And frankly, everything has been going great since I've been committing it to the Lord. And I've made some dog friends, but uh, you know, there are a few that, you know, like to snarl here and there, but they, they don't do anything. And, and God is uh, my re-reward. So that's an example of how God is taking me at my word and he's answering my prayer. And this is something, something to remember. He's answering your prayer. Another thing I want to point out is he will answer the intent of your prayer. I have found sometimes I could honestly look at a situation and say, wow, God didn't answer my prayer, but everything's okay. In other words, he didn't answer the prayer the way I phrased it. One time, uh, again, you know that we've had our financial struggles primarily in the past. We're not rich now, but we're thankfully, you know, we're not in debt and God is supplying well. I broke a tooth and I needed to get a cap for my tooth and it was going to cost $989. I mean, really a thousand dollars and things were going well. And, uh, but you know, I mean, it's a thousand dollars. That's a lot, you know? And so I was praying that the Lord would supply me with an extra $1,000 to cover this tooth. I just said, you know, please, I mean, it seemed logical. I didn't think about anything really. I was going kind of month to month. The Lord was enabling us to pay, enabling us to pay off debts. And then we would have, you know, we have bills monthly also, and things were going well. By the end of that month, okay, the Lord had provided for my tooth and it was paid for. And he provided for the debts that we meant to, to pay off, as well as all the bills. But I looked back over it and I could, and, and he was blessing. I could, but I could only see that he had provided about two thirds of the $1,000 that I asked for. Now, one thing was a little lesser at the end of the month. I was preferring to have $100 in the bank after the bills were paid and everything at the end of the month. I didn't have that that time. I think I had a little less than 50, but everything was paid. Everything was good. It was just my own comfort zone. So the thing is, the Lord really answered my prayer. I was asking for more than I really needed, and he knew that, but he supplied everything that I needed. So he answered the intent of my prayer. Another time that he would answer the intent of my prayer was with regard to weather. Now, we've also gotten kind of spoiled, or we did in the beginning, because the Lord just he just has answered a lot of weather prayers for us. And by this, he has shown us his faithfulness. He's encouraged our faith. But we mature in faith. And this one day when Jamie, my wife, was going to work, we were due for snow. I think we got several inches of snow was due to fall. And I'm saying, oh, Lord, hold back the snow. Please don't let it snow and everything. At the end of the day, it snowed. We had our few inches of snow. Jamie went back and forth and everything was fine. He didn't answer my prayer, but you know what? The intent of my prayer was that Jamie would be safe in her travels. That was the intent. And so I say is, oh Lord, stop the snow. Well, you know, even if he stopped the snow, that doesn't mean she'll be safe in her travels, does it? People have accidents on non-snowy days all the time. So the Lord's just kind of showing me, he said, well, what you really wanted was you're praying for safety for your wife. That's what you want. And so you see, this is kind of the same. I think you'll find this the same with all of us. And that is, we may be praying for something that we don't actually need. And it's something, so God will answer the intent of our prayer and provide all our need because he has promised to. Trying to think, I have a number of examples here. Uh, let's see. One time, uh, one time I was looking to make an extra shelf at home. We were storing food. We were bulking up in case of, you know, crises or whatever. But we really needed some extra storage space. And I usually keep wood on hand. I did have wood on hand, but I didn't have the right wood for what I needed to make an extra shelf to store this food. It had to be stored inside uh, in a climate controlled environment, you know, whatever. And... I mean, I prayed about this for, you know, several weeks. I didn't like the fact that I was going to have to spend a decent little amount of money somewhere between maybe 30 and $50 to get the wood that I needed to make this shelf that I, you know, I was looking at. 
So I kept that all in prayer and I was, I was getting ready. It was within a few days of starting to work on it. And one day the Lord kind of steered me off to the side through some heavy traffic. I took a side route around through a neighborhood and here setting out on the sidewalk, someone had left uh, a little cabinet. Uh, it was uh, you know, like one of those, a kind of cabinet. It was kind of tall and skinny. And it was something that you might get at a department store and put together yourself. It you know, has a free sign on it. And obviously they wanted to get rid of it. And I thought, wow, you know, I look at this, is, is that really going to be big enough? Is it okay? I mean, they're trying to, you know, they're, they want to give it away. And so I picked it up and it needed a little bit of work, but I had the wood that I needed and uh, it was a great thing. I mean, it turned out to be a great cabinet and it held everything that I had at that time. It held everything that I had. And so the Lord provided this for free. But you see, he was doing this in his own way. It wasn't what I anticipated being the answer. And so this is, this is one of those ways we have to be ready to yield to the Lord in what he says. Uh, let's see here. Also, I had a time when I, when I needed a drill. This was a part of different projects I needed to do at home. And the, and the drill, the driver I had had finally gone out. And I wanted, I wanted a Dewalt. Uh, I knew Dewalt was a good drill, but a hundred dollars on sale at that time, and they hadn't been on sale for a while. And a hundred dollars was a lot of money for us. And so I kept this in prayer, in prayer, in prayer. But there I am walking through Walmart one day, and they have their own drill that's less than twenty dollars. I think, what this thing? You know, I, it's not a Dewalt. You know, but yeah, but I could get five of them with change and, and have change left over instead of the Dewalt. And I felt the Lord saying to me, you know, I, I, I went and prayed about it before doing anything. I felt the Lord saying, you ought to give it a try. Lower your standards a little bit. And I took it back. And you know something? It worked absolutely fine for my needs. Uh, a Dewalt would have been great for being a contractor, which I had been at times. It would have been a much more reliable and a quick charging drill, but uh, this worked just fine for me. Plus I had a corded drill as backup. Everything was fine, but I had to change the way I thought. The answers to prayer were right there. So remember that God will answer the intent of your prayer. Now remember also by the word of God that he has promised to supply our needs. Okay. In Matthew 6, 33, he has said, if you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, he will supply all of your needs. All right, listen to this from Philippians chapter 4. Now, the, the quintessential verse on needs here is 419. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And you know, that means he has plenty of supply to give you to meet your needs. It's not saying he'll make you rich in the flesh. He's saying he has plenty of supply. To meet your needs. But going back to verse 11, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and how to abound. Everywhere and in all, and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. So God has promised to supply our needs. Sometimes he supplies abundantly. Sometimes he supplies just enough, but he will supply your need. And this is what I want to encourage you to do is really seek to call upon God in truth. So you're pulling aside to him and you're seeking him. Lord, what do I need? What do I really need? What is the purpose of this? Try to get down to it. Are you asking for more than you should really be getting? Okay. Uh, for example, now I mentioned this this uh, woman that I had helped a little bit as she was talking about, I mean, I met her at her workplace and she was saying how she had lost her job previously. But the way things are now, both her and her husband have jobs. The kids are fine. Everything's good. But she wants another job. Now, why does she want it? Now I'm speculating a little bit, but I'm using this as an example. And so if she wants another job, perhaps it's like, why does she want another job? First of all, is she grateful for what God has given? He has supplied all that they need. You know, but maybe it is that the needs aren't quite being met and they need a little bit more. They're struggling a little bit. 
And there might be a reason for this. Maybe they were forced to get into a home that's really way too small to, and that's all they can afford and they need something bigger for the children. That's a legitimate need. And you go to God and you present these things to him and he hears you. I just think one of these things I had down here, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to say that much, but one time the Lord blessed us with a hundred dollars. And this was simple. It was at a time when we were tight again, and we really didn't have extra money for the things, these, for these extras. My wife and I each needed shoes. And then we wanted, I wanted to get some vitamins, which were about $20 because I was used to taking vitamins and they're really good for health. And as far as I could see, we didn't have the money for it. I mean, I was praying about it. I was looking at it. I was seeing it. And so I believe that God would supply an extra hundred dollars. And it took about four weeks of prayer, but one time he allowed me to find a $100 bill and to meet that need. I mean, God is good, but other times he shows me things I already have that can meet the need or he answers it in a different way. Things aren't as desperate as you think they are. We struggle with water here in Botswana. Sometimes the water isn't so good. And we've just gone through a week where we've been struggling with water. But we were well supplied with water before it started. The God, God gave us enough good water through the week to get by. And then when we were down, we were really, really low as far as our water supply, drinking water and whatnot. And then he just filled our water yesterday with beautiful, good, good water. Uh, for our use. So the point is, you can count on God to supply your needs, but I want you to keep an eye out for how he's answering your prayers. Be ready for what he will do, because it's not always what you think it is. He may just be showing you something you have that you didn't realize. He might answer it in an unexpected way. And so please remember this principle, calling upon God in truth. Say, Lord, please show me the truth of what I need. And when you have that need coming before him, you know, you can count, that, count on that he is going to hear those prayers and help you. He will help you through. May God bless you for this.